What's going on YouTube? This is NecroStevo and it's time for week 10, finally into the double digits for season 4, division 1 in the Pokemon Premier League. This time the Eternal City are going up against the Baron Munich who are coached by Shoddy. I will leave his information in the description. Um, I actually might end up battling Mr. Murkrow, so if that is the case, I will say that before the battle. And I'll leave his information in the description too, because I've battled him before, and they're both great battlers, so definitely have to do some heavy preparation here. So for this battle, um, this is actually going to be a pretty straightforward team builder. Uh, you see here in the team, I really am not completely sure what he is going to bring here, because he has so many strong options against my team. Uh, right away, Clefable, Nidoqueen, Latias, Rotom Wash, Lucario, Sneasel, Gorgice, Armaldo, Mega Pidgeot, and Semiseer. I can see every single one of these Pokemon that he has coming to this battle. I do think some of his options are stronger than others, so we're going to try to capitalize on that. Uh, first off, you can kind of see that I have the Grass, Water, Fire core going on with Volcarona, Blastoise, and Ferrothorn. And then we also have the Fairy uh, Steel core going on as well, with a, you know, Dark in there as well, instead of Dragon, basically. Still the FDS core though. Um, Rhyperior is actually going to be one of our main win conditions. I just changed this a little while ago because I had Garchomp in that slot. Why did I change it from Garchomp, you might ask? Because I'm expecting him, number one, to bring Clefable. I'm also expecting Nidoqueen, Latias, and either Rotom Wash or Gorgais. I'm also expecting either Lucario or Sneasel with, of course, Mega Pidgeot. semi is the only thing that I really don't see coming. And even that might come just because he probably knows that I'm bringing Ferrothorn. So for that matchup, Rhyperior is slightly superior haha, to the Garchomp. Number one, I don't have the weakness to Clefable stab options. Number two, if he's running like a physical Lucario with Ice Punch, Garchomp can't live that. Whereas Rhyperior has an opportunity to live moves from Lucario. Number three, Latias and Nidoqueen pressure Garchomp heavily. Latias outspeeds it, and then a queen can live any hit and one hit KO it back for the most part. Uh, Sneasel with Ice Shard, very, very annoying. Um, and then, of course, Mega Pidgeot, its stab is not resisted by Garchomp. So, Rhyperior covers all those rolls, and depending on what he has left, I can set up a Rock Polish or a Swords Dance. Now, bringing Rhyperior does leave me a little bit more susceptible to Rotom Wash and Gorgais, but I feel like those are easier to deal with than his offensive options. So um, one of the first defensive pivots we have, oh, and if you need to know the speed there, just so I can outspeed Mega Pidgeot after a uh, Rock Polish. Um, but anyways, uh, for on for Rothorn, I went with, um, wow, what's going on with these Eevees? There we go, that's weird. That's weird, it just reset those, very odd. But we went with the spread here in order to take hits overall from his team. Uh, I'm assuming Nidoqueen's going to have fire coverage I'm assuming Clefable might have fire coverage. Latias and Rotom Wash both might run Hidden Power Fire. Uh, Gorkais can get Fire Blast. Sneasel can get Low Kick. Lucario can get Close Combat or Blaze Kick. Even Mega Pidgeot might run Hidden Power Fire for Ferrothorn. Uh, what's nice is that he can't really cover all of my defensive pivots at once. So really there's going to be a good amount of scouting going on ahead of time. Just try to punch some holes with some other Pokemon and then scout to see what his coverage is. Because uh, that's where I need to be a little bit more careful with things. Unfortunately, I am expecting Ferrothorn to get burned uh, by the Rotom Wash at some point. But that's why we're running Leech Seed so he's not complete setup fodder after he gets burned. Up until that point though, it's a great switch into Clefable. Uh, to a lesser extent, the Latias, because he might even trick me with Latias or Rotom Wash. Uh, if I can keep it healthy, then it's a great switch into Sneasel and Lucaria. It's not really a switch into Gorgais, because Gorgais can Fire Blast it. But if I'm already in there, then it makes it a lot easier to switch around. Uh, or if I'm in with Blastoise, I can switch it into that scenario too, because he's not likely going to Fire Blast my Ferrothorn. Now this particular investment allows Ferrothorn to live uh, a chance to live a close combat from a Life Orb Adamant Lucario. Um, otherwise I went with a lot more special bulk similar to last time just because he's going to be switching in a lot of special hits from Latias to a lesser extent Gorgais, Mega Pidgeot. Um, so yeah, I wanted to have that bulkiness and that's why I went with Leftovers here too. 
because really his only two things making contact with Lucario and Sneasel, and with the right coverage they can 2-hit KO for Arthorn anyway. Um, Stealth Rocks just because uh, I need to find out if Clefable is unaware or Magikarp before I try to set up with either Rhyperior or Volcarona. And if I can set up on it, that's great. Otherwise, I, I really want to be able to, to handle that. Now with Gardevoir, this is one of my hole punchers this match. The investment is just there to once again outspeed a Mega Pidgeot. Um, he does not really have a switch into its dual stab. Uh, everything is hit neutrally or, um, I mean, the only thing that can't switch in to Moonblast is Nidoking and that gets hit by Psyshock. So that's really all I need for this battle. Um, this should be Psyshock, not Psychic. But, uh, yeah, that's all I really need for this battle. Um, this is a possible lead depending on what he brings. Because I do see him bringing Rotom Wash, but I'm afraid of Gardevoir getting paralyzed pretty early on too. Um, we do need to be wary of Gorgeist having Shadow Sneak if he brings it. Of course, Sneasel can hit me with Ice Shards too. Lucario can hit it with Extreme Speed and Bullet Punch or even Vacuum Wave if he just has a tiny bit of HP left. Uh, Mega Pidgeot even gets Quick Attack. So there's a fair bit of priority on his side that I need to kind of be wary of. But outside of that priority, I can either trick the Clefable, I can hit everything else there pretty hard. Um, with Trace, I can pick up some interesting abilities like Magigar from Clefable. Uh, I can pick up uh, Sheer Force from Nidoqueen, which will make Moonblast even stronger. Um, if Gorgeist is in, I can trace Frisk and see what his item is on Gorgeist. Uh, and actually his Gorgeist size that he chooses is going to be pretty important in this battle, and I'll get into that too if he ends up bringing that. Um, yeah, but on the whole, this is really just here to spam Moonblast. If it gets low, then I can use it to revitalize Volcarona or Rhyperior to a lesser extent Weavile. But uh, it's just really nice spammable stab. The extra HP investment is also really nice to have a good chance of living those errant priority hits uh, just because I didn't need to put a bunch of speed on in order to outspeed max speed Pidgeot because if he happens to bring Scarf Lucario things like that will outspeed me anyway. Scarf Latias, that outspeeds me anyway. So um, yeah, Gorga, uh, Gardevoir is also a nice switch into Latias for the most part. He could have Shadow Ball but uh, just nice natural specially defensive bulk means that I can chew one of those very easily and then hit him back if I need to. Now my next one condition is going to be another Volcarona set. Once again, just enough speed to outspeed. Uh, this is for max speed Lucario this time, because that is the next most important benchmark. The rest into uh, HP just to uh, grab some extra bulk. But with those three moves, Fire Blast, Bug Buzz, and Giga Drain, I can hit his whole team. And with Life Orb, I don't have to set up early. I can kind of just spam attacks early on. And it's really important overall to just not be locked into options against this team, especially because I don't know what he's going to bring. Um, Fire Blast is easily the go-to move unless Latias and Rotom Wash are still alive. And then otherwise then Bug Buzz is, is the go-to move because he's not going to switch in Mega Pidgeot on a Volcarona. Um, now with all that being said, things I need to watch out with Volcarona. Number one, getting paralyzed. I'm not running Lumberry. I don't have Heal Bell. So, getting paralyzed is going to be a huge detriment to Volcarona this week. Also, if Clefable or Nidoqueen are alive, or Almaldo, I don't see him bringing Almaldo, but Almaldo can get Aqua Jet, which would shut down uh, an offensive Volcarona, so we need to be aware of that. But if they're alive, they can set up their entry hazards again, and so I need to keep Blastoise alive until the entry hazards are gone, because I'm going to get worn down really fast with Life Orb and the weakness to Stealth Rock. Uh, Giga Drain is really just there for the Rotom Wash. Um, but other than that, I don't see myself using it. It is also nice to finish something off and then get some HP back. But really, Fire Blast and Bug Buzz are all I really need in this battle. Now, speaking of getting rid of entry hazards, here we have our Blastoise. This is going to be a fun set if I can play it properly, said so many Pogotubers ever. Uh, you see I have 12 speed EVs. That's just there to speed creep a Nidoqueen or to outspeed max speed Gorgai Super by one point. Uh, Nidoqueen outspeeds Blastoise by just a little bit, so I imagine he might run just enough to outspeed no investment uh, or uninvested Blastoise 
So this allows me to beat that. The rest is in HP and defense in order to help take hits from Lucario. Um, the Mirror Coat, you might say, is a weird move, but with that HP investment, I can take any hit from Rotom Wash, I can take any hit from Latias, and then Mirror Coat it back and kill something, because I will be taking so much HP. Uh, this is really just for the Rotom Wash, because I imagine it'll Volt Switch out a lot, which makes Blastoise a decent lead. Um, I, de I need to play a little bit more carefully with it than I did last week, where I just let it take a big chunk of HP right at the beginning of the match. But that makes him a decent lead in order to chew a hit and then Mirror Coat it. Um, if I get hit by a Volt Switch and then Mirror Coat, he's not going to go into Sneasel. So basically, everything else on his team dies after a Volt Switch. So that'll be nice if I can pull that off. Otherwise, we're spamming Scald. Ice Beam is there just for secondary coverage against the Mega Pidgeot, Nidoqueen, and the Latias. Uh, to a lesser extent, the Gorgeist, if Gorgeist happens to be the super form, we can't take hits as well. But if he goes with the small form, then uh, it's not really as offensive of a threat, and we can take hits very well from it, especially because it'll be speedy. So really, I just want to make sure I can outspeed the super size, otherwise Seed Bomb can do almost half HP um, if it's max invested in attack. So we do need to be aware of that. Our last Pokemon is Weavile. This is a Pokemon I do need to help clean things up this week. And of course, why would I not bring Weavile versus Sneasel? That's just the epic showdown everyone wants to see. Now, against this team in particular, Weavile's ice coverage is phenomenal. The only reason I would switch from using ice is up against Rotom Wash or Lucario. Even Sneasel takes a ton of damage from an Icicle Crash. Uh, and then, of course, against Clefable, either an Icicle Crash or a Knockoff followed by an Iron Tail KOs it, which is very, very nice. I almost went Banded Weavile, but I need to be able to switch up moves in this matchup. I need to be able to switch to Ice Shard if I if I if that option comes up. Uh, we just went with Max Speed in order to ensure outspeeding everything on this team here. Couldn't really mess around with Adamant or anything, otherwise Mega Pidgeot would outspeed us. Uh, granted, we have the Ice Shard, but I don't want to necessarily rely on that because there's a little bit of a weaker move um, for the most part. So. Icicle Crash is just very nice for his whole team. I'm expecting him to have either Scarf Latias or Scarf Rotom Wash, so I do need to watch out for those options. But uh, also, if I go with a nice speedy Weavile, that stops his Gorgeis from being a speedy small Gorgeis and Willow Wisping me too. So we'll have that nice option. It is very nice that he has to pick between if he wants to have Colby Berry or if he wants to have Yachi Berry for weakening Dark or Ice type attacks because of course you can't have both. So I'm expecting there's a good chance that Latias could have a Colbert Berry because he doesn't want it to get Pursuit Trapped. Um, so I, I that's why I just kind of like running with this type of spread here so I can kind of just, I want to pelt his team as much as possible with Gardevoir, Weavile, and Blastoise. And then that means that Volcarona and Rhyperior can clean up a little bit easier. Now I expect him to bring um, the first four Pokemon on the list for sure just because they have such a great defensive matchup. And then for his offensive options, probably Mega Pidgeot and either Sneasel or Mega Pidgeot and Lucario. Um, that's not to discount the rest of the things there, because as I said earlier, everything's a threat on his team, but it's just hard to tell what he's going to bring. Uh, so it'll be very, very interesting to see how that matchup ends up. So thank you guys for watching the Team Builder, and I do hope you enjoy the battle. I'll see you in a minute. Okay guys, thank you so much for watching my Team Builder. I'm going to preface this video with a little bit of an explanation. Uh, first of all, thank you very much to Mr. Murkrow for being the substitute battler for Shoddy. Uh, Shoddy had some scheduling issues and of course in different time zones, so that wouldn't have really worked out great for either of our schedules. Uh, but Mr. Murkrow was gracious enough to not only battle me over and over and over because I'm having Wi-Fi problems, it was really windy the other day, just very frustrating. Um, so we finally ended up just doing it on showdown and even during the showdown battle, my Wi-Fi disconnected and I had to use my phone to use it as a hotspot so that we could get through the battle. Uh, in the first instance of this battle, we probably got about a third of the way through it. That battle was going amazingly for me. I was in a great headspace. I, uh, was prepared to battle and I think Mr. Murkrow was even, you know, ready to go. We, I just think we both felt better about the first battle. Um, three or four instances later after that first disconnect, 
I was just frustrated, not in a good headspace, and this is where we have this battle. So of course this is not to be an excuse, I'm just trying to give an explanation. Because if you guys understand my headspace, you might understand a little bit more of my plays, or actually lack thereof. Uh, so yeah, now you'll see that um, we did, he did bring exactly what I thought he would bring. I didn't actually see Lucario and Sneasel coming, but uh, you know, that um, that ended up working out there because I was more or less prepared for it. Um, in the, the, the first disconnect we had was really instrumental because not only when that disconnect did he know that my Blastoise had Mirror Coat, he also knew that my um, Rhyperior was Life Warped and my Gardevoir was Scarfed, which were all more surprises than anything, so that really changed the way things had to be played. Um, and actually, I went into the rebattle thinking that his Rotom was Scarfed too because um, uh, just like the way it was taking hits, it didn't have a lot of HP investment. So, uh, I didn't know that his Lucario was Air Balloon too. But anyways, though, I'm not going to talk too much about the previous battles. We're going to take a look at this one. Um, so he ends up starting off with his Nidoqueen, and we are just going to replay the first few turns of this battle because I wasn't able to recreate a Lucario burn that happened, even though I did switch in the Volcarona purposefully to try to get him burned. I just went for Psyshock on the first turn just to um, kind of make him, in case he wanted to stay in there, it would do a lot of damage to the Nidoqueen. Uh, here I was unable to get the burn, so now we're playing from fresh. I really should have gone for Giga Drain because I thought he would switch off to Rotom, but I just went for Fire Blast on the off chance that he stayed in trying to finish me off. Uh, I knew I would outspeed him because he's Air Balloon. Uh, here he makes a great double out into the Mega Pidgeot, and I was hoping, I was just very, very sure he was going to go for Hidden Power Fire or Heat Wave. I, I don't know why we have Hidden Power Fire when we can have Heat Wave. And then here I was incredibly certain that he was going to go out to Nidoqueen, so I went out to Blastoise to threaten it, but he just goes for Hurricane and even gets the confusion and that means I can't stay in there at all because even after the Mega Evolution I might hit myself and so I switch out again into Rhyperior and he gets the confusion again which uh, it doesn't matter because he has the Hidden Power of Grass and so I guess at this point I just want to say that I was playing on tilt um, I normally do pretty well about not letting my mentality or just like my kind of like in games where you have a mental state stat I don't I normally don't let that get shaken too much but after I think my internet had gone down like four or five times at this point we had tried replaying the battle three or four times and I was just very frustrated and this was like after I called my internet provider and tried to have a conversation about stuff it was just like uh, so much basically just first world problems is what I'm saying but at the time I let it affect my mentality because what the proper play would have been is to probably just let Gardevoir stay in against the Mega Pidgeot um, if he stayed in when I had my Scarf Gardevoir in, I outsped him and hit him with a Moon Blast, putting him in range of either Stealth Rocks or an Ice Shard from Weavile. And if he switched out to Nidoqueen, I had have a free switch out into either Blastoise or my Ferrothorn, which is actually what happened in the original battle as he sets up his rocks. Uh, in both of those scenarios, I end up with a healthy Ferrothorn or a healthy Blastoise, which is a much better scenario than having a Blastoise at 40% HP and a dead Rhyperior. So, those are the plays that should have been made there. I'm not out of the battle by any means, but I've already lost one of my win conditions, and I don't really have anything to show for it. All of his Pokemon are still basically at full HP. So, this is a very different battle than I anticipated on having. Now then, with Weavile in, I was pretty sure that he was going to switch out, so I'm going to go ahead and double out into my Gardevoir, which sucks because I actually have to trace the No Guard. That's not the ability I wanted, but, meh. Uh... Here, I just went for Moonblast, and this is where we find out that he's Citrus Berry as he paralyzes my Gardevoir. I thought he was Scarf that whole time. He did such a great job of disguising that. Um, he surprised me here staying, and I thought for sure he was going to switch out into something. That's why I just stayed and went for another Moonblast. Uh, but he goes for a Hydro Pump, and expecting another Hydro Pump, we're going to go out into Ferrothorn, because now I'm fairly certain that he doesn't have a weird hidden power to hit my Ferrothorn. Um, here's an opportunity to set up the Stealth Rocks, just because I need to threaten his team. He has several Pokemon weak to them. I need to get those entry hazards up and going. Uh, I go out to Blastoise here as he sets up his Stealth Rocks, because I was like, okay, I need to spin and get rid of these rocks so that Volcarona doesn't die, but he kills me with an Earth Power. And I knew that this was an offense in Nidoqueen, but I did have a chance to live that hit. 
because uh, I didn't have, I was at 40%. So um, he might have actually been uh, modest, which means I had a very slim chance to live that hit. Um, but just going to go out to Weavile here because he has to switch or he loses his Nidoqueen since he's an offensive Nidoqueen. Uh, and the way he brings in Sneasel, we know that it's Scarfed. And I, I could have switched out to my Gardevoir, but I figured if he goes for a low kick, I can go into Gardevoir after the hit, and then I can live another low kick. Or if he switches out, I get a free chance to healing which up my Volcarona. But I get paralyzed, so that basically seals the battle. In order to pull this back, I would have been, I would have needed to bring in my Volcarona, Quiver Danced, after because uh, he still would have lost half of his HP after the rocks. But I would have been in a position where, okay, I think I can take any one hit from Clefable and then hit it back. Uh, but here we're just trying to get off some, maybe if I get a crit, I can tank out the Nidoqueen. At least I didn't get 6 would um, I, I really lost here in this battle when, in the beginning when I was frustrated. So um, thank you very much, Mr. Renko, for being so um, gracious and allowing me to take up so much of your time for this type of battle. Uh, I haven't battled him in a while, so I did enjoy the battle that I had with him as another trainer. I didn't feel like I brought my best to this match. And here you see the end result in a 0-5 for the Eternity Enders. So um, I feel like I learned this lesson in a different way when I was in the LBA just because it's like, okay, don't let what happened during the day affect your battling, which like I had something bad happen that morning and then I ended up battling that evening and I just wasn't in a good headspace. Here we have clearly external factors allowing them to frustrate. And it's like, okay, so you have to play the match again. Not a big deal. At least you're able to play that match again. And a lot of leagues, if you aren't, if you disconnect or something, then you lose automatically. Uh, so that's basically what happened here. But I had to go through the process of losing in the battle for it. So thank you guys so much for watching. I will be giving you a much better battle next week. Uh, and this is actually week nine. I think in the team builder, I said week 10. But um, yeah, things to look forward to. No giving up. We're still in a very nice position on the team table, on, depending on how other teams do, of course. But I'm not in danger of being relegated or anything. I just, I know I would have had a much better record, at least, if I had taken these last two battles seriously. So I appreciate you guys watching, and stay tuned for next week, and I'll talk to you later. Bye now.